Hi everyone, I'm Dara Poocher from Pathways Education. In this presentation, we're going to be talking about DNA, the blueprint of life. In the description below, there's a worksheet that you can either fill out as you go along or feel free to just fill it out at the end after you've finished watching this video. Okay, so let's get started. So for today's pathway, here's just a little bit of an overview of what we're going to be talking about. So first, we're going to talk about what DNA is. So DNA stands for deoxyribose nucleic acid. And I know this word seems super confusing, and it's okay. You don't have to know it or even know what those things mean right now, because often DNA is just abbreviated to DNA. But what you should know is that DNA carries information about how a living thing will look and function. So living things like animals, like you and me, like plants, anything that's living has DNA. Okay, so now that you guys know what DNA is, we're gonna talk about where DNA is stored. So where is DNA stored? DNA is stored inside of cells, and this is a picture of a cell. And a cell has all of these different components to it called organelles, but DNA is specifically stored inside the nucleus, which you can see here. So the nucleus is kind of like the control center of the cell because it holds all of the important information, most importantly the DNA, that a cell needs to function. Okay, so now that we've covered what DNA is as well as where it's stored, let's kind of discuss what DNA looks like and what it's made of. So DNA is super small, so you can't see it with just your eye, but scientists have been able to look at it through microscopes and through uh, digital imaging, so we kind of have an idea of what it looks like. So DNA is in the shape of a twisted ladder, as you can kind of see here, and this shape is commonly known as a double helix. So here's kind of the sides of the ladder twisted together, and then these can be representative of the rungs of a ladder. And then just a little fun fact is that if you uncoil and line up all the DNA in your body, you would get a line twice as long as the diameter of the solar system. That's huge. Not just the Earth, but the entire solar system. All of that is inside just you. Okay, so what is DNA made of? DNA is made up of these things called nucleotides, which you can see here. And you can think of nucleotides as the Legos or building blocks that make up a strain of DNA. So you kind of have to stack all of these nucleotides on top of each other to get that super long strand of DNA. And nucleotides have three components, the phosphate group, the sugar, and the nitrogenous base. Now you don't really have to be too worried about all this complicated structures here. Just know that nucleotides have these three distinct components. So let's talk a little bit more about what nitrogenous bases are. And again, these seem super complicated, but let's just focus more on the bigger ideas. So the four types are called adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. You might wanna pause the video and try repeating those back because they are kind of a little bit of weird words. So let's talk about base pairing. DNA gets its shape through something called base pairing. And base pairing occurs on the rungs of the ladder. It occurs between the different nitrogenous bases. So adenine, which can be represented just by the letter A, always pairs with thymine, the letter T, while cytosine always pairs with guanine. So as you can see here, here's adenine, green, paired up with thymine, and that's called a base pair. So you might be wondering why adenine and thymine always pair together. And this is because adenine and thymine are complementary to each other. And then the structures of cytosine and guanine are complementary to each other. So you can kind of think about it like adenine and thymine fit together like puzzle pieces, but adenine and cytosine do not. So here's a question that we haven't necessarily talked about so far, but I just want you guys to kind of think about it and see what kind of answers you can come up with. So the question is, what similarities do you notice between the four bases, and then what differences? So again, the bases are thymine, adenine, guanine, and cytosine. So you might want to pause the video right now and write down your answer, or just think about it in your head, or maybe tell your parents or siblings that are sitting next to you. 
Okay, and now I'm going to assume you guys have paused the video and thought about your answers. So, one similarity is that adenine and guanine both have these two rings, right? One, two, and one, two. Whereas cytosine and thymine only have one ring. So, the nitrogenous bases that have two rings, adenine and guanine, are put into this category called purines. And then the nitrogenous bases, thymine and cytosine, that only have one ring are put into a category called pyrimidines. And again, we're going to talk about what this means in a little bit. Just kind of have those words in your mind as we continue through the presentation. So, Yes, like I said, we're going to talk about it and we're going to talk about it right now. So purines and pur puridines pair together. So we already know that adenine and thymine pair together and then guanine and cytosine pair together and it's because of their complementary structures. Well, we can break this down and describe why their structures are complementary and it's because Adenine and guanine are both purines, whereas cytosine and thymine are both puridines. So you can't have a nitrogenous base from the same category pairing with another nitrogenous base from the same category. That's why two purines can't pair together, so adenine and guanine can't pair together. So over here to the right, you can see a diagram of what it looks like when adenine and thymine pair together. They form these two bonds between, between them represented by these dashed lines here. Whereas when cytosine and guanine bond together, they form three bonds. So keep this in mind too as we continue through the presentation. Now we have a concept check question to see if you guys have been listening during this video. So based on what you've learned about complementary base pairing, can you name each of the bases? So a hint would be to look at the number of bonds and rings and don't pay too much attention to the actual structure because it can get pretty complicated. So look at how many rings this structure here has compared to this one, and then also how many bonds are forming, and then do the same for here. So you might want to pause the video and kind of think about or write down your answer. Okay, so I'm going to assume that you guys have paused and written down your answer. So the answer is that this is an H adenine thymine base pair because it has two bonds. And this is a guanine cytosine base pair because it has three bonds. One, two, three. We've talked about what DNA looks like and what it's made of. Let's talk about what, what DNA does. So a sequence of DNA is called a gene. So this sequence here maybe would be a gene. And the information on a gene serves as the blueprint for what makes you you. Everyone has different genes. That's why we all look and act different from one another. So we all have DNA in our body, but the DNA is different. So that's why maybe I have blue eyes and brown hair, but you might have brown eyes and blonde hair or something like that. And genes are passed down from your parents. So you're made of half of your mom's genes and half of your dad's genes. That's why you kind of usually look like your parents, right? And even your siblings, because your siblings also get half your mom's genes and half your dad's genes. And then finally, we're going to talk about why DNA is so important to scientists. So DNA is important to scientists for many reasons, but one important reason is that everyone has DNA. So by understanding, by understanding what DNA is and what it does, scientists can help people who are sick and can help them find a cure for this disease or a treatment. So an example would be diabetes. And Diabetes is a disease that occurs when a person's blood sugar level is too high. If it's not treated, it can have really harmful effects on the person. So scientists were able to identify the gene that helps to control blood glucose levels, so the section of the DNA, and then they were able to use this information to develop a treatment to help those with diabetes. So then they wouldn't experience those harmful effects and they could live a lot better quality of life. So now we're going to talk about some fun facts of DNA because DNA is a super fun topic and these are only a few fun facts. Feel free to Google uh, with your parents permission other fun facts and then please leave them in the description below so that we can all learn something new. So the first one is that if you could unwrap all the DNA you have in your cells you could reach the moon 
6,000 times. And then there's an estimated 3 billion DNA bases in all of the DNA in your body. So those are those nitrogenous bases that make up the rungs of the ladder like we talked about. And it would take a person typing 60 words per minute, eight hours a day, about 50 years to type out all of the DNA in your body. In 2000, a rough draft of the human genome was completed. And in 2003, the final draft was completed. So the human genome is if you were to type out everything in um, all of the bases in your DNA. But it was a computer that helped to write the human genome. And then lastly, humans and chimps share anywhere between 94 to 99% of our DNA. So that means that we have very similar DNA to them and most likely a common ancestor. Okay, so now we're at the end of the presentation. Uh, I hope you guys learned a lot. But if you want to build your own DNA model at home, your own edible DNA model at home, here's some instructions how to do it. Uh, please make sure to ask your parents for permission before attempting any of our experiments. Uh, on the left, you'll see a list of materials, and then on the right, you'll see the instructions. Please feel free to pause this video and follow along. And here's the second page of instructions. And we'd love to see uh, your recreations of this experiment. So we'd love for you guys to send us pictures on our social media. And here is just an example of what your final product may look like, but feel free to be as creative as you want. So yeah, thank you. We hope you found this presentation helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments and we will get back to you as soon as we can. Uh, make sure to follow us on our social media to uh, be the first to know when we post new activities and upload new videos. And then finally, please visit our website at www.guidingpathways.org to start your journey on a new pathway.